This is an experiment to show that the centripetal force does not equal the accepted value of mv squared over r for non-contact forces. The experiment that uh, I have designed here is motivated by the desire to try and figure out a fairly easy way to measure the centripetal force. Now normally, you would measure the centripetal force on a ball on a string model, whereas we would attach a ball to a string and swing it around the circle and measure the force that the string exerts. Uh, however, I noticed that the Earth is not attached to, say, the moon on a string. So a ball on a string is not a very accurate way of doing it, and it's not very easy to measure the centrifugal force this way as well. Instead, the Earth is attracted by a non-contact force of gravity, and so it's more like a magnet attracting the, uh, a ball from steel rather than a ball on a string. So I was thinking, how can I do that same thing? And so literally, what I did was that I used a magnet, and I used that to attract a steel ball. And I put a small spacer in between the magnet and the steel ball to ensure that, that this is a non-contact force. So nothing is actually physically holding the ball onto the magnet. Only the attractive force of magnetism, which is a force similar in nature to the non-contact force of gravity. So this would be a very similar kind of attraction. So let me show you the, mecha the mechanism I have designed to measure this. And what we have here is we have basically a large cantilever built out of Lego bricks. And at the end of this here, I have a steel ball and uh, attached to a cylindrical magnet and the white spacer in between there uh, ensures that there's a little bit of distance between the magnet and the steel ball. And underneath is a small piece of cardboard to uh, even out the bottom of the surface. And what happens is that this entire mechanism can spin around in this drill. And at some point, when the revolutions become high enough and the centrifugal force becomes high enough, it will cause the ball to release from the magnet. Now the force between the magnet and the ball is going to be absolutely constant. So what I would expect is that, uh, that when the centrifugal force overcomes the strength of the magnet, it will disconnect. And so what will happen is that since the force is constant, what will vary are the rotations per minute. So as a, if you get further out, we would expect that it would go slower. And as you go closer into the center, you know, it would spin around faster because it would need to spin around faster in order to generate enough centrifugal force to cause the ball to separate. So this is a very easy way of measuring the force and distance and velocity, which are the three components involved in centrifugal force, and since force is equal to a constant, we can then calculate what is the relationship between force and velocity. So the analysis that we're expecting here is that we're expecting that the force is equal to the conventional mass times velocity squared over r. Now since in this experiment the force is equal to a constant, I can say that the force is equal to 1, and if the force is always equal to constant, you can then calculate that the velocity should be proportional to the square root of r. However, strangely enough, and unexpectedly, the results show that the velocity is actually uh, proportional uh, linearly with the velocity. So k being some constant times r is equal to velocity. And this strange uh, consequence for, orbital, for the orbital formula is that we normally assume that gravity, which is g times the, times the product of the masses over r squared, is equal to the centripetal formula, which is mv squared over r. But the experiment basically shows that the centripetal formula for non-contact forces is closer to just mv over r, a linear formula. 
let's take a look at the data that was collected. And here I have a graph, and this is showing uh, three things. Uh, the, over here on the right, I have a legend. The blue dot represents what was actually measured in the experiment. The red dots are what we expected, with the square root of a r. And the yellow is uh, what we would expect with a completely linear formula. In this case, uh, you take the uh, r times 6 uh, plus 21. Now, what you can see here is that uh, the expected, which is this uh, red line, uh, looks pretty linear, but it does curve down a little bit faster than the yellow, which is linear. So you can see that for a radius of up to 6, which is my initial data set, you really can't tell the difference between uh, linear and R-squared proportionality. There just isn't enough difference there to tell. So my additional set of data took two more data points out at radius equals uh, 9 and 10 inches, because this is the point where you can actually begin to tell the difference between an R-squared and linear formula. And as you can see, out towards this edge here, we can see that the data, which is the blue point, more closely matches a pure linear formula rather than the red, which is showing a curve downward. So this is a very strange result and unexpected. So what's wrong with this picture? So we have generally assumed this formula for the force of gravity equaling to the centripetal force. But if we assume that it is instead this gravity is equal to a linear mv over r, we do the calculations and figure out what the v would have to be in that case. We would get velocity equals the gravitational constant times the mass of a large object like the Earth divided by r. However, that does not equal what has been experimentally measured, which is that the orbital velocity is always equal to square root of d m divided by by r. So, and it's uh, very difficult to try and reconcile the force of gravity formula with this new non-contact non centripetal force formula, mv over r. So it may mean that some new physics are required to explain this non-contact centripetal force. 